Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Adam here. Um, today we are going to attempt to launch a couple of communication satellites. Now, they are not going to be high orbiting communication satellites due to the fact that, well, we don't really need those yet. Uh, it's more important just to get coverage of the planet started uh, so that we can do more remote operations in the future. This is pretty much what I've designed here in that it's exactly what I've designed. Uh, there's three dishes on board, a bunch of batteries. Hopefully we'll have enough power to actually uh, function and all that stuff. We have this nifty fairing. Uh, there's a probe core here in case I need to deorbit this little booster stage separately. And then it's all just rocket stuff from there. So these cost about 24,000 space bucks each. I'm hoping we can get away with launching four of them and not needing a fifth, but I suppose we'll see. Now, it's not manned. So that means we have to take a kind of cautious approach to how we're going to actually launch this. So I'm thinking we're going to have to do a pretty inefficient burn. We have a decent amount of Delta V. I'm hoping that it will be enough. Let's get all of our maneuver stuff set and all of our little stages the way we want them. Okay, SAS is on. Double checking the staging. Looks good. Let's do this. So I'm not going to worry too much about um, the periaps of this orbit. I'm mostly concerned with what sort of uh, apple apps we get because that's a lot more important. As long as the periaps is above the atmosphere then I don't really care. Uh, we'll go ahead and adjust the orbit out from there. Now the reason that I'm, I'm going to take a approach like this is that our line of sight is going to be pretty bad with the space center, so I'm not even going to do a gravity turn until we get to like probably 40,000 meters or so uh, to try to keep my vector above the horizon. Because if we take the path we usually take, by the time we're circularizing our orbit, we're going to be uh, down below the horizon there and it won't work. So, going a little fast here, let's slow it down. Actually, we need to speed it right back up because we're going to be separating here. I didn't even bother with parachutes on those. I did put some separatrons on them. What the heck happened with those? But, uh, I didn't even bother with uh, parachutes on those because they've just been not uh, not giving me credit for returning them anyway. So until that's fixed, I'm not even going to bother. There's not a lot of point. I'll start, like, the teeniest, tiniest gravity assist turn here just so that... If we're going to lean one way, I'd rather lean to the east, but I definitely don't want to start too much. I'm not going to worry too much about inclination as long as it's close to zero. They don't all have to be the same. I think we're going to go for an apoapse of somewhere in the neighborhood of, let's say, 400,000? Maybe 300 and... Let's go with 400,000. If, if this thing can manage 400,000. Start getting a little bit of more speed going here would probably be a good thing to do. So we're not completely being inefficient here. So our apoapse is outside of the atmosphere. I would really like to... Ditch that. Oh my god! Did that damage the satellite or anything? I don't know. That was insane. Let's go ahead and deploy this too because it has a longer range. Almost out of fuel on this stage. I'm getting a little bit concerned about how much fuel we'll have by the time this is said and done. We had to test some of those uh, fairings on the launch pad. That seemed completely mad. Alright, so the space center is still right below us. Hopefully, like I said, by the time we get up to our Apple apps, it will still be in a visual range here. If not, we'll be crashing at this point, so. I don't want to get going, like I said, too fast over the horizon. The later launches will hopefully be able to time with the satellites so that. Um, We'll be able to do a have a little more leeway with the launch, but this first one especially, we got to be careful. And I think we've separated everything that could potentially 
exploderate anything, so just in case we have problems, let's get the solar panels extended. This is slow going, but we're getting a lot of thrust out of this thing. I don't like how the, the angle that we're going at necessarily. Hopefully, how far are we to our Apple apps? Not that far. It'll probably be like five or six minutes by the time we actually get to where we want to be. So hopefully the Space Center will still be down there. Might want to turn one of these dishes towards it and leave it on for a little bit just in case. Just to be on the safe side, boost our range as much as we can. We've got the electrical power right now. Alright, coming up on 330. Let's go for the full 400. I'm feeling good about our, our chances here. And it takes less and less fuel the higher we go here. Close enough to 400, we can fidget around with the orbit a little bit from there. So, circularize. Next apoapsis is create node. Looking at 400. This stage alone has enough to do it. Excellent. Execute the node. And this is probably going to give us somewhere around an hour for our orbital period, I think. Oh god, this is nerve-wracking. Kerbal Space Center starting to look a little over the horizon. Oh, it's over the horizon. Oh, it's over the horizon. Oh, God. Why is it not counting as being over the horizon? I'd like to use the flight computer and just execute this. Go, now. At least we won't crash, hopefully, if we get this. We're going to be out of range of the Space Center in seconds here. I don't know if this is going to fail to, like, when the signal cuts out, if the engine stops. Apparently the engine stops. And that was barely good enough. Barely good enough. Whew. <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll wait until our Apple apps is above the Space Center again, and we'll get this thing circularized. Now, I'm going to work on timing my next launch so that this satellite is kind of uh, lagging behind the space center when it when it first gets into range of the satellite of the uh, space center and this one's you know lagging behind that way hopefully by the time we get up it will still be relaying the signal and it'll give us a little bit more uh leeway to make up for this stuff i mean that was very very close to not working but it did work that's what matters so let's see here we have to just do a bunch of time warping that was intense how's our battery doing this is power, not fuel. There. Keep an eye on how the batteries do with the one, because the, the dish does use a lot of power. Does the dish not use power when it's out of range? That would be neat. We're in the sun right now, so it's hard to say. Okay. Our Apple apps is still going... Okay, this is perfect. So, create and execute. What are we looking at for a burn this time? 188. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And we'll be in range of the Space Center for the whole time here. Oh, those batteries do go down quick. That's with one dish activated. That's concerning. May not have brought enough batteries. I mean, the night's going to be relatively short here. Because we have an orbital period right now of about 50 minutes. It's probably going to be about an hour. So it means about 30 minutes of dark. So if this thing can make it through 30 minutes, then it's fine. Alright, so we have like a 55-ish. I should just go for an hour-long orbital period with it. That seems like a probably good idea. So let's go ahead. Get our smart ass up. Go pro-grade. And let's just boost this like two kilometers to like 103. It's gonna have to be more than that to get that up. Let's go like 400 and 
50? Just kind of pushing the limits of our antenna range a little bit, but I suppose if we're using the dishes and stuff too, it doesn't really matter. Excellent. So now we have to wait until we come around the far side and uh, have the peri or the uh, yeah the peri apps needs to be above the space center, which should happen on or the Apple apps needs to be, which should happen relatively soon. What is that? I never recovered something. Probably I quit the game. Why is? Hmm. I had to recover that. I don't know what the heck the deal with that is. It's definitely one of my pods. So how long is this going to take for the space center to be where I want it to be? A while. Maybe the next orbit around? Yeah, that's pretty perfect. Okay, Apple Apps. What is this going to cost us? Not much. Excellent. Everything is excellent. We don't have a signal yet, do we? The stupid uh, auto time. There we go. I was about to say the auto time warp is fighting against me, but I knew we were only just around getting a signal, so. Didn't really want to mess with it too much. So like I said, hopefully we can get away with doing four of these satellites instead of five and get good enough coverage. One of these dishes is intended to be aimed at the Mun and the other is intended to be aimed at Minmus. So our orbital period is just a tick under what I want it to be. So I think what we're going to do is I'm going to save because I still get nervous about decoupling things because so many years of the game bugging out now. I believe everything is good to go here. Now this thing is going to need the tiniest little nudge to get free. And let's just try to get that up to 51. And then that gives us our perfect hour, more or less. Alright, so that thing is done. Do I have enough fuel aboard this to deorbit it? I'm going to wait for that satellite to get a good distance away before I try to fire this. Oh, we have a lot of Delta V now that we separated the bulk of everything here. I don't know how much distance I need here. Let's give it one little tap. Get some separation going. Hopefully we'll actually be able to deorbit this thing. Excellent. Man, that, I, I hold my breath every time I hit the bracket key to change vessels because I'm just so used to that crashing the game. I'm, I'm right now using almost four mega or four gigabytes of memory and in the old version of the game that would mean I was crashing so I should probably set one of these other dishes to active vessel for now just to try to make sure that we keep our range going and give this some sort of a real name uh, we will call this Kerbin Comsat, and we'll call it number one, or actually we'll call it Lokeo for low Earth orbit, low Kerbal orbit, one. There. I like to put the planet name at the front just so I know what the heck is happening. And close that down, close that down. All right. So I am going to just enjoy things for a moment here and wait for this to be in the right position for us to try doing the next launch.
And actually, I like to do this too, which is shut down the engine just so there's no accidents. All right, so the first satellite is approximately where I think it should be for this launch. Uh, it just came into range of the Space Center, so I'm hoping we will be able to take our second vehicle, which is identical, and uh, just go ahead and launch this thing as it is. I didn't adjust the force on those uh, on this. That's too bad. I, it didn't really matter last time. It was just scary. So I think I can be a little bit more traditional with this takeoff. Let's get our mech jeb up. Uh, orbit info, delta V, maneuver planner are the things that I really want. So like I said, I think I can be a little bit more traditional with this. We're still going to probably not start doing our uh, gravity turn until relatively high just so that we have more of a... a straight up and then then we start the turn if that makes sense just to make sure that we keep this within range now the other satellite should pick up the slack but I am being a little bit careful just because these are expensive I'm not gonna reload if something goes wrong and uh, we have an okay amount of money right now but I got to launch another mission out to the Mun or Minmus or something to raise some probably launch some stupid Taurus too always with the Taurus Getting a little wibble wobble going here now. Let's see if those explode in the same exciting way. They crash straight into each other. Even with the Separatrons, that was pretty epic, actually. Kind of looked like they were meant to do that. I'm definitely looking forward to getting to the point where we have Mech Jeb uh, automation for some of this stuff. Because this is just. I'm going to do this three or four more times and this is the exact same thing over and over again. I guess that way with those tourist missions, those could be completely automated basically. So we're gonna aim for our ultimate height here which was about 450 this time instead of boosting up the way we did. Because if we're in a lower orbit we're gonna be going much faster than that other satellite. Now we're going to leave half the orbit kind of low so that we can phase our orbit to where we want it to be in relation to the other satellite. It'll make sense when we actually do it. Let's go ahead and do that. Why did those do that? It's terrifying. It's just like, boom, explode. All right, so let's target this. Actually, let's target that with this let's target mission control with this and I'll deal with uh, the permanent targeting once these are all up right now I'm just trying to make sure that we have overlap here safety margin it's hard to get bootstrapped with a whole bunch of stuff like this a whole bunch of uh, satellites so do our best. Alright, ending up this stage. And now that we are in space, let's go ahead and deploy some stuff. So we are using a lot of electricity now, and we do not have a generator aboard this engine. There's no alternator on this engine, so trying to make sure we get enough solar power going here so I kinda wanna bring my uh, eventual orbit to I have one hour for the satellite we've already done so I wanna have this one probably be about 55 minutes so that I can phase into the position that I wanna be in so whatever altitude my periapsis ends up being at to reach about a 55 minute uh, orbit that way every time we go around we'll be five minutes either further ahead well we'll be going faster so we'll be going further ahead five minutes every time and we can get approximately to the right location uh, that way it should work well, that way we don't have to do any fancy timing with our launches or anything like that it's harder when you're trying to do the GPS networks and stuff like that but for this phasing is fine 
Because then you have to get the uh, polar orbits along the right. It, it, I've done that a long time ago. It was a lot of work. A lot of work. This is like kind of peaceful. If this one works out, I'll probably do the other two just off camera because it's going to be exactly the same as this. And uh, I'll be back with the actual final result then, I would imagine. I want to go over just a little bit more so we're translating more of this into speed. Stay at about 30 degrees, call that good. All right. So we said 450 is our goal, so let's start thrusting back. The other one's at like 451 by 450, thereabouts. Doesn't really matter, as long as the orbital periods are the same, it will work out. So we need to change our periaps to be, say, we'll just start with 300 kilometers. What's the node come up as? Take a look here. So see, this will be at the right apoapse, but every time we'll be falling back down, going faster, and uh, we'll be able to phase our orbit that way. You know. We're going to be slowing down. We're going to be very close to that satellite, actually. So let's execute this node. 300 is just a guess. I'll, I'll fiddle with the orbit until we get it like I want it to be. I'm hoping this will bring us... If it's 10 minutes, I mean, that would be fine, too. Looks like we're going to be only about... Could three work? I don't think you know three just won't work. We need four at this at this range. The angle of the planet is just too big. It takes up too much of the sky. I feel like I just lost my left sound channel. I came back, I guess. I don't. It might just be a weird thing from being in the map view. I'm wearing headphones when I'm doing this, so. All right, so the danger of crashing is now past. And we should have satellite coverage actually for quite a bit longer anyway. So that, that worked out nicely. We just launch when that one's coming right up and we'll be in good shape. So our orbital period is about seven minutes off of the other satellite. So that's not too bad. Let's get this ready to... Do what we want it to do circularize at the next apoapsis but we won't actually set that up until we're happy with our phase angles here we might be happy with our phase angles already seven more minutes might mess this up worse if i were here that's going to take five to do it at that kind of distance i'm just going to warp around till i like how things look I think this orbit's going to be too much. We'll see. Well, I don't know. We can see the connection between the two of them. and get it real close to the atmosphere there, but it doesn't touch it. It's going to break. No, know, because we're slowing down. Eh, that's like on the outer edge of what I would want, really. Because the other satellite, if it were in the... Yeah, that's not exactly what I want. I mean, that... That's going to get out of phase, because they're not going to be perfect. Let's go around until we're happy. I think I might be a little more happy with this. Let's see how this comes out of the atmosphere. Uh... That is looking really about the same as the other one. But we're out of satellite coverage anyway. So we get to do this dance now. We wait until I, they're where I want them to be. And there's satellite coverage. That'll be fun. There will probably be satellite coverage this time, but they're going to be too close together. Yeah, 
You know what? Let's just increase our periaps up to 375 this time around. So that we're not phasing by quite this much, because I'm not liking the seven minute thing very much. Yeah, that would be perfect if we were doing five satellites that that those number of degrees separation there but it's not quite what I'm looking for see this is a better increment now geez they're almost on top of each other skip on ahead That is much closer to what I want. All right, I think this time around is the one. Let's go ahead and... Uh, where is Circular Eyes? Boom, do it. That keeps it pretty high above the atmosphere, so as, as there's a little bit of error in these things... It'll give us more time before our satellites get out of phase and all screwed up. Are we going to be in range of the Space Center, though? Damn it. Every satellite does make this easier, but still not there. All right, I think this time it's actually going to happen. And I, I'm feeling pretty good about this angle. It looks like if we had another satellite there, they'd be, you know, in a in a position to clear each other and everything. I think I don't have a protractor out or anything that it, where I can. We might have to do a fifth set. Damn it! Is it go like there? No, they should clear. Four should. I'm not sure. Might have jumped the gun on the burn, but what are you gonna do? I can always put it on a. At this point, I want it to get kind of ahead a little bit more, so I can leave it on a slightly shorter orbit and just let it drift until I'm happy with its position, too. Yeah, I want it to kind of get ahead a little bit, so I think I might do that because it will get closer. I just have to remind myself it's only off by three seconds, but over time, when we're time warping and stuff, they'll end up adding up to quite a bit. So I'm going to go launch a few more of these. I'll be back when we get our network all positioned. It's fiddly stuff, but... uh. Maybe I'll, actually, I think I will take this orbit down so that it's just one minute faster, because then I can do a minute adjustment. But I'll do all the fine-tuning and stuff off-screen, and I'll be back when we actually have this settled. Hey, guys. So I got my satellites in orbit. They're more or less where I want them to be. They can all see around the planet. That's the important thing. They're not exactly uh, where I want them to be, but we'll monitor them. They have basically full fuel tanks, so I can adjust their orbits as I see fit. They're all in one hour, more or less, by like a fraction of a second orbital periods. We have this uh, stage coming down right here. Now, it would probably have satellite connection right now. Ex yeah, it definitely would. Everything should now. Except for the fact that it ran out of power, so the antenna is not working. But uh, what we're going to do after this either explodes or crash lands is we are going to go ahead and launch a I think I have the stuff unlocked now to launch um, a scan sat satellite and start actually mapping Kerbin that's something I want to get going pretty soon we have a couple of missions to do some satellites in specific orbits but I still I don't really want to do those on camera well they're, they're just pretty much exactly what I've been doing except they have specific inclinations and uh, orbital parameters and stuff so Oh, that is getting close to something exploding. Is this thing really going to make it through this? I'd be disappointed. The engines actually work reasonably well as a heat shield, truth be told. You wouldn't want to be coming in from, like, interplanet... Eh, that thing might blow. I would like it to break up. It would be fun. Uh, but anyway, like I was saying, uh, get the ScanSat stuff going. I have to build a satellite to do that. I haven't designed anything yet. Um, and then we can... Uh, how has that not exploded yet? There we go. That was just the antenna. Um, then we can actually get to the point where we're mapping Kerbin, 
getting some science. I think you get science once it actually completes the map. You can transmit science back. That And I think we only have one scanner unlocked right now, so it'll be what it is. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today. When we come back, we'll start mapping the planet. Thanks for watching.